Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Muhammad Abid, and uh, the title of this course is uh, Nonlinear Control Systems. Uh, before we talk about uh, nonlinear uh, control systems, there is uh, one basic question that is, uh, why do we need to study nonlinear control? Uh, all of you have taken uh, at least one course in uh, control systems, linear control systems and uh, you are uh, quite expert in designing uh, controllers for linear systems. So uh, now we have question that why do we need to study this new course uh, which is uh, uh, a little bit more uh, as far as difficulty level is concerned it is a little bit more difficult. So why do we need to study this course? So the first uh, important uh, point is that uh, Nonlinear control gives you an improved control. What do we mean by improved control? So you remember that a linearized model become less accurate for wider operating points. Actually, almost all real physical processes they have nonlinear mathematical model. And what do you do is that you uh, linearize uh, the nonlinear model at an operating point. A general nonlinear model is uh, given by this equation. X dot is equal to f of x, where f of x is some nonlinear function of x. So uh, you remember the approach, uh, the Taylor series expansion of a nonlinear function that can be op about uh, some operating point that is given by this expression. That is the nonlinear function evaluated at the equilibrium point uh, or operating point plus the derivative of this function with respect to its argument x and this also evaluated at the, the equilibrium point multiplied by uh, uh, x minus x naught divided by 1 factorial plus uh, the second derivative and likewise higher order terms. So in linear control what do you do is that you, uh, you ignore the higher order terms and the reason is that if uh, this x minus x naught is smaller that is you are working near the e operating point near the equilibrium point then this difference will be smaller its uh, square power will be further smaller smaller and uh, its cubic power and higher order powers will be uh, even smaller and smaller and you can just uh, ignore these terms Therefore, this nonlinear function is approximately equal to uh, this uh, relation. That is, we have ignored the higher order terms. Uh, and furthermore, uh, by noting that we can bring this uh, term to the left hand side, and therefore, fx minus fx naught, that is equal to uh, this uh, derivative of this function with respect to x multiplied by x minus x naught. We have simply uh, rearranged this equation to write it in this particular form. And if you define x minus x naught to be equal to delta x and delta x dot is equal to fx minus fx naught and uh, then delta x dot is approximately equal to this relation. What is dimension of f? Same dimension as this state vector that is uh, generally we denote the dimension of states uh, by n. So this uh, is n by 1 vector. And what is derivative of a vector function with respect to a vector? You get a matrix. So this thing, this thing is a matrix. And uh, therefore, this expression is very similar to the one which you see for linear systems. That is, x dot is equal to uh, some constant matrix A multiplied by x. So this is how you linearize the nonlinear systems and then utilize the linear control theory for the design of controller for those systems. However, uh, this uh, theory, linear control theory becomes less applicable if we, uh, if we move away from the operating point. For example, here uh, I think it is visible to you. Here we have a nonlinear uh, graph f of x. What we do is that we approximate this nonlinear curve by a straight line. So you see that as we move uh, at the operating point this black curve that is uh, approximately equal to this blue curve that is the linear approximation of nonlinear function is approximately the same as the nonlinear function 
However, if we move away from this operating point, this black curve becomes significantly different from the blue curve. That is the linear approximation of nonlinear models that becomes less applicable. So one reason for using nonlinear control is this one. That is linear control theory becomes less applicable if we have wider operating range. Another reason for using this nonlinear control is that uh, there are some nonlinearities which are called hard nonlinearities. And we cannot obtain linear approximation for these hard nonlinearities. So, what are hard nonlinearities? Uh, hard nonlinearities, for example, uh, this uh, saturation, saturation nonlinearity. What is saturation nonlinearity? Uh, that is depicted over here that is up to certain point uh, x and uh, the output of that nonlinearity is the same these are linearly related however beyond that thing if you increase the input output does not increase that is uh, the saturation you are well familiar with this kind of nonlinearity and uh, this nonlinearity uh, is very common in uh, physical processes every process has certain saturation limit uh, and that is always there in physical processes. Uh, another kind of uh, very common nonlinearity uh, is dead zone nonlinearity. What is dead zone nonlinearity? Uh, dead zone nonlinearity means that for certain range of inputs, the uh, there is no output. That is very common. For example, in uh, uh, motors. What you expect is that for the mathematical model that generally you derive is that as uh, you apply small voltages, there is small induced torque or small uh, uh, velocity. You, if you increase the applied voltage, there is a proportional increase in the uh, torque. However, what happens in real motors is that up to certain range of input voltages, there is no output velocity, there is no induced torque. That is, there is dead zone, and uh, after that dead, dead zone, the motor starts behaving like a linear element. And again, this kind of uh, nonlinearity is very common in physical processes, in pumps, in motors, in all uh, other real processes. Other examples uh, are backlash and hysteresis nonlinearity. What is backlash nonlinearity? What is backlash? In gears, in gears, uh, if you, for example, ideally what happens is that if you rotate input shaft, input pulley, there is a proportional rotation in the output pulley. However, what happens in reality is that there is gap between the teeth of two pulleys. So as input pulley starts moving, uh, there is no displacement in the output pulley for a certain uh, range. And after that, there is a, a proportional increase in the displacement. And if you reverse the direction of displacement of input pulley, so that is a backlash. And similar phenomena is uh, there in electrical circuits, which is called hysteresis. So these are uh, nonlinearities, and such nonlinearities cannot be linearly approximated. For example, if uh, we want to linearly approximate this kind of nonlinearity, uh, at, for example, this operating point, what will happen? Uh, its linear approximation is zero, right? A at this operating point. Therefore, uh, such kind of nonlinearities, these are called hard nonlinearities, and uh, we cannot uh, find linear approximation to these nonlinearities, and therefore, linear control theory will not be applicable for these systems. Another advantage uh, of uh, using nonlinear control is that nonlinear control techniques can uh, easily handle, some of the nonlinear techniques can easily handle uncertainties. And sometimes nonlinearities are intentionally added to physical processes to had, handle uncertainties. What are uncertainties? Uh, before I talk about that, some examples of uh, nonlinearities on off control. On off control, uh, you may have uh, seen it, uh, in, is very common in many processes. Uh, Kaha pe use karte hain? Aapne? Screen. 
G is 3 iron so in iron you want to maintain temperature at a particular level and there is an, an on off controller if the uh, if the uh, temperature rises above or reaches at the desired level then uh, the that thing is uh, switched off and if uh, it drops uh, below certain level then uh, you turn on the heater so uh, you see that uh, that kind of controller is uh, uh, can easily handle uncertainties if there is uh, some error in the uh, sensor which is measuring the uh, temperature that can be easily handled or even if there is some uncertainty in the heating element so that can be easily handled by these kind of nonlinearities so sometimes nonlinearities are intentionally added to handle uncertainties another reason to use nonlinear control is that it is less expensive why less expensive if you uh, there are uh, uh, sensors and actuators uh, which are uh, more closer to linear sensors and actuators however those will be more expensive those will be more expensive and uh, therefore uh, we uh, prefer not to use these expensive uh, sensors and actuators uh, rather we can uh, use uh, nonlinear sensors and actuators uh, and use nonlinear control theory that will be less expensive there was uh, previously one limitation of nonlinear control techniques. Uh, this limitation was that uh, uh, you know that linear controllers, when designed, those can be easily implemented by, for example, using uh, operational amplifiers. Uh, you can easily implement a transfer function by using operational amplifiers. However, uh, nonlinear equations cannot be implemented by operational amplifiers so previously this was a limitation uh, but now we have modern computers we have uh, digital processors which can implement any kind of uh, nonlinear uh, equation nonlinear differential equation with uh, 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 theoretically uh, any uh, complexity so therefore uh, now this limitation is no more there